Renny Doll, poet, painter and teacher, a man caught up in the violent struggles of his time, a poet whose life ended with a bullet from an assassin's gun. Renny Doll was not a prolific poet. He published only two volumes of poetry, Red Candles in 1922 and in 1926, Dead Water. But his vibrant and daring images, his mix of intellect and passion, his innovations in poetic form make him one of the modern masters of Chinese and world poetry. Wen Do's life spanned momentous changes in the history of modern China. The collapse of the ancient imperial system, followed by the chaos of feuding warlords carving up the carcass of a dead empire, followed by the bitter rivalry of nationalists and communists, put aside as they jointly fought the invading Japanese, only to re-emerge and boil over into bitter civil war. In the midst of all this flux and chaos, Wen Yido changed Chinese poetry. He tore up the mummified imitations of ancient verse written in high literary Chinese, which had come to dominate the Chinese poetry scene. But unlike fellow poets such as Hu Shi, Wen did not rush from the rigid forms of traditional poetry into the wide open arms of free verse. Instead, he created a precisely crafted poetry, a great formalism. Each poem drilled into verses that look on the page like cohorts of infantrymen. Yet Wen did not replace one rigid poetic set of structures with another, rather he paved the way for each poem to find its own form. In a critical essay, he summed up his poetic creed of innovation within the confines of an ordered poetic structure by saying that the greater the poet, the more he will enjoy dancing with chains on his feet. He believes that writing poetry is like dancing in chains. But the poetry of Hu Xi is free of chains. Chains of the manacles and leg irons that criminals are made to wear. Writing poetry is like dancing, but a poet needs to constrain himself with chains. If he doesn't wear chains, he will dance too freely. Wen Yido thinks that dancing too freely is what the poetry of Hu Xi is like. The old school of poets wore chains but were not allowed to dance. Wen Yido dances in chains. Wen Yido's best known poem, Dead Water, published in 1928, captures the spirit of the times in China. This much as T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland had earlier captured the underlying post-war pessimism of the West. Dead Water is a symbol of the stagnant nature of Chinese society after years of corrupt imperial rule and the ravages of feuding warlords. Yet within this stagnation, desperate hope bubbles up and alliances are made with the devil. A bleak pool of dead water where no breeze can raise a ripple. One may as well throw in metal scraps and leftover food. Perhaps the metal will turn into emeralds, the rusty cans into peach blossoms. The grease will weave a silken gauze and the mold will rise and become twilight clouds. Let the dead water ferment into a green wine in which white foam floats like pearls. Tiny pearls giggle and turn into big pearls, then get broken by pilfering mosquitoes. Perhaps a bleak pool of dead water is fair after all. If the frogs get lonely, they can bring music to the place. A bleak pool of dead water where beauty cannot reside. One may as well let the devil cultivate it and see what kind of world he will create.
In dead water, Wenyi Do mixes beauty with ugliness, intellect with emotion. And it is in the tension between these elements that we hear the characteristic voice of modernism. Because of his emphasis on aesthetic formalism in poetry, Wen was sometimes attacked for being too remote. But this was far from the truth. Wen was a man of the people, often living in poverty and electing to walk on foot when his university was forced to move southwest to Kunming to escape the invading Japanese. One of Wen's sons remembers him as a boy, a lively boy who sometimes got into trouble with his father. After we moved to Kunming, the teachers in the school there used to give us regular homework. Often it was mathematical calculations. But I was fond of games, and often I didn't do my homework. One day my father noticed that I wasn't doing any homework, and he asked me why. I lied to him and said it was because the teachers hadn't set any homework that day. That he didn't believe me. Impossible, he said. How could they not give you any homework? There was no homework. If you don't believe me, you can go to the school and ask the teachers. <laughs> this made my father very angry, so he grabbed me and took off one of his slippers and smacked me on the backside. When he hit me, I ran away and tried to hide behind my mother. Hmm. After his return from America, Wen spent all the rest of his working life as a university professor in Beijing at Tsinghua University and later, forced to move by the invading Japanese, in Kunming at the Southwestern University. Wen taught literature, earning barely enough to live on and supplementing his meagre income by engraving personalized seals. A toad shivered, feeling the chill. Out of the yellow earth mound crawled a woman. Beside her no shadow was seen, and yet the moon was so very bright. Out of the yellow earth mound crawled a woman and yet no crack showed itself in the mound, nor was a single earthworm disturbed, nor a single thread of a spider web broken. In the moonlight sat a woman. She seemed to have quite youthful looks. Her red skirts were frightful, like blood, and her hair was draped all over her back. The woman was wailing, pounding her chest, and the toad continued to shiver. A lone rooster crowed in a distant village. The woman disappeared from the yellow earth mound. There is no doubt his poetry is very beautiful. He's very enthusiastic about his subjects, but his enthusiasm is implied rather than overstated. He pays much attention to the beauty of language and beauty of tone and the beauty of rhythm. He's a wonderful person, the best teacher for a young mind. Wen Yiduo stood on the student's side, supporting the students. He believed that the ideals of the students matched those of the society and could only bring benefit to the nation. Wen Yido was an artist as well as a poet. He studied literature and art in the USA, in Colorado and Chicago. The vibrant visual images in his poems show the artist's eye. In his poem, Colors, the artist's feeling for color is expressed through a list of colors and the emotions he attaches to them. Life was a worthless sheet of white paper Green has since given me growth. Red has given me love. Yellow has taught me loyalty. 
Blue has taught me nobility. Pink has brought me hope. Gray has brought me sadness. To complete the picture, black will add death. I have grown fond of my life because I love its colors. He was emotionally attached to his country and to his people. He wanted to understand the Chinese people, to get closer to the people. To observe the natural landscape was part of his passion for the motherland. His love of country had a deep emotional expression. At a time when modern China was struggling to redefine itself, Wen wrote a poem called Who Are the Chinese? Here, a Beijing secondary school teacher presents the poem to his class. Please tell me who the Chinese are. Show me how memory embraces us. Please tell me how great my people are. Whisper to me. Keep your voices down. Please tell me who the Chinese are. Who has the benevolent hearts of the emperors Yao and Sun? Who has the blood of Jing Ge and Ni Zheng? Who has inherited the Chinese soil and Chinese souls? Tell me how extraordinary wisdom is carried by a Chinese unicorn from the river. Tell me how melody and rhythm came from a flawless phoenix. And who can tell me about the silence of the Gobi Desert and the solemnity of the Five Mountains? Wen Yidou's fascination with death hangs over his poetry like a prophecy. In 1946, he was shot dead by assassins. Many believe the nationalists, angered by his sympathy for the communists, hired hitmen to gun him down. Although. As a man in the middle, some believe the bullets could have come from either side. The assassin shot him, and he was killed. His eldest son was also injured, trying to protect his father. At about five o'clock, my eldest brother walked back home with my father. We were always very cautious. My older brother went ahead a bit to check out if there were any suspicious strangers on the road ahead. But all he could see was a newspaper boy. He bought a paper, went back to my father, and then the two of them continued on their way home. My father walked a bit in front, and my brother followed him. There was no one about. It was a bit strange that the street was so empty. Later, we found out that was because the assassins had blocked off the street, allowing nobody to come into it. The assassins had hidden themselves behind the window of a house close to our home. When my father and brother were nearly home, the assassins ran out into the street behind them and started shooting. One shot hit my father in the head. The communists and nationalists have conflicting stories about who Wen Yido's assassins were. <laughs> the Taiwanese nationalists claim it was the communists who shot him, and the communists claim that it was the nationalists. There was a great controversy, mainly in the 50s, about who assassinated Wen Yido. <laughs> in his poem, perhaps, we sense that, as with Keats, a poet he much admired, when is half in love with easeful death. Perhaps you are too tired of crying. Perhaps you want to sleep a while. Then I'll tell the owls not to cough 
frogs to hush and bats to lay still. I'll not let the sunshine pry your eyelids, nor let the wind your eyebrows sweep. Nobody will be allowed to awaken you. I'll hold a pine umbrella to shelter your sleep. Perhaps you hear earthworms turning dirt. Perhaps you hear grass roots sucking water. Perhaps prettier than man's cursing voice is this kind of music you now hear. I'll let you sleep. Yes, let you sleep. Close your eyes now, tightly. I'll cover you gently with yellow earth and tell paper ashes to fly. In his poem, Confession, Wen denies being a poet, but what he means by this is a traditional poet of the old order, merely imitating what came before. The final line of Wen's confession opens the door to a new kind of freedom in Chinese poetry. Freedom to include the ugly as much as the beautiful, to explore the anxieties of the present as much as the glories of the past. I am not lying to you. I am not a poet, though I love steadfast grey rocks, green pines, the sea, the sunset on crows' backs, and twilight woven with bats' wings. You know I love heroes and mountains, the national flag fluttering in the wind, and chrysanthemums of pale yellow or dark bronze. My staple food, remember, is a jug of bitter tea. But there is another me. Are you scared or not? With thoughts like flies crawling in the garbage can, 